Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to MacFirst Limited FY 2023 earnings conference call hosted by Hen Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Asta Jain, Senior Research Analyst from Hem Securities Limited. Thank you, and over to you. Thank you, Yashitri. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining MacFoss Limited S523 Earnings Conference Hall. Joining us on call today are the senior members of the management team, Mr. Atul Dumre, Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Vinod Prasad, Wholesale Director and Chief Financial Officer, MacFoss Limited. We will commence the call with the opening thoughts from the management team, post which we will open the forum for Q&A session, where the management will be glad to respond to any queries that you may have. At this point, I would like to add that some of the statements made in today's earning calls will be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risk and uncertainty that may cause actual results to differ from anticipated outcome. Now, I hand over the call to Mr. Atul Dundi, Chairman and Managing Director of Company, for opening remarks, post which we will have the Q&A session. Over to you, Atul, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being with us today at this event. Uh, I'm Atul Dundi. I'm Chairman and MD of Macros Limited. Uh, present along with me from our side today is Mr. Dinur Prasad, who is CFO, and Mr. Nilay Chavan who is a full-time director. So, on behalf of our company, Macross Limited, a warm welcome to everyone on this conference call of declaration of earnings for H2 FY 2023, which is the year ended 31st March 23. So, let me start a brief business overview. And then I'll hand it over to Mr. Binod Prasad, who is promoter and CFO for Financial Spark. And after that, we'll be more than happy to take all your questions and suggestions. We are pleased to report a revenue of 80.80 CR and PAT of 7.41 CR for FY23. So that is revenue of 80.80 CR and PAC of 7.41 CR. This is inconsistent with our growth so far and with which is translated to three years EAGR of turnover of uh, 71%, EBITDA of 108%, and PAC level of 191%. This all achievement is despite of the challenges posed by a volatile global environment, which uh, includes fears of war, also fears of recession, and also supply chain disruptions that we have seen over last year. And I believe that our business fundamentals are robust and strong, positioning us on trajectory of sustainable growth. Last year presented its fair share of challenges, I must say, uh, primarily evolving around supply chain issues. In fact, there are two things I would like to highlight uh, related to supply chain. Firstly, there were widespread, uh, widespread shortages about semiconductor products. Uh, you all must have heard about those shortages going around over the globe. And secondly, the supply chain was inconsistent. That means that when we require the material, sometimes the sea uh, freight shipment for the sea freight shipment or the air freight shipment, it was not available at the right time. There were delays due to that inconsistency. Now this resulted into availability and high prices of the products, which impacted both us and our customers. However, to respond to these sticky situations, 
uh, like there are two things that we have to respond one is the shortages or lower availability of material and second is pricing so in, in response to shortages what we have done is prioritize our sales to our corporate customers because we know the, that these people are into some production activities and also these corporate customers are generally high uh, value per order customers for us so we have prioritized those customers during the time of shortages and as you can see in the numbers this has resulted into higher number of corporate orders for us during last year and we believe that uh, this focus on corporate customers last year will help us uh, in coming time to grow even higher secondly there was an issue of pricing because of the shortages and intermittent supply the prices were going you know up and down mostly up what we have done is we have absorbed some of the price jump into our margins and passed some of the prices to the customers this was also strategic decision given by that the shortages and prices jumps are short term but the customers are long run so we wanted to protect and support our customers during these tough times and both of these initiatives or strategic decisions i feel will help us in longer run talking about the products we are doing sustained investment and focus on building categories of development board and drone segment for last 3 4 years and this has yielded in remarkable growth for us during fy 23 we anticipate that the seeds that we have sown uh, in these sectors for last 3 4 years will give us fruits even in coming times for near future they we are also working on three or four categories uh, in coming year which will act as a growth driver in long term looking ahead we are very optimistic about our prospectus for 2024 our projected success will be underpinned by three key factors i think one is uh, expanding into new categories so while expanding into categories we will have we will acquire new brands as well as we will be introducing new products second is optimizing our supply chain to get the products at better pricing and consistently for our customers and third is emphasizing development of our proprietary products because these products are really close to our heart and we believe that these products will be key in long run future we are a technology focused company and as so we remain committed in advancing ourselves to developing scalable in house infrastructure which will accommodate our future growth furthermore we want to enhance our operational efficiency and accountability of people by maximizing utilization of this in house developed erp system also in addition to the commercial efforts that we are taking we have made significant strides in servicing government orders we have established a in house dedicated team to focus on government sales and we are also increasing our presence in this government sales market lastly we have successfully implemented a warehouse system which is capable of processing 5x the orders that we are processing today this system will certainly help us in our growth in future now coming to some data points our average monthly website and app visitors combined have seen increase from 1.9 lakh in fy20 to 4.6 lakh in fy23 similarly the total order served has increased from 83000 which we served in fy20 to 
2 lakh and 15 thousand orders that we served in FY23 alone. Our average order value has grown from around 2000 in FY20 to around 3700 3800 in FY23. Company has also served almost 10,500 pin codes in last financial year, FY23, which is roughly 60% of the total pin codes in India. While number of customers who place two or more orders increased from 15,000 in FY20 to around 48,000 in FY23. Our inventory management is also very efficient, which I believe is one of the highlights of our company. So only 2.33% of our inventory comes under a very slow moving category. And we are confident that we can also clear this inventory by keeping moderate or slightly lower margins. And this is also reflected in our return or replacement orders which is only 0.28% of the revenue that we generated last year. Overall, we are confident in our ability to capitalize market opportunities and deliver a strong performance in the year ahead. That's all from my end. Thank you. And I'll now hand over to Mr. Binod Prasad, promoter and CFO of the company for further financial overview. Good evening, everyone. Uh, in financial year 23, we have achieved total revenue of 80.8 CR, uh, with EBITDA margin of uh, with EBITDA of 11.35 CR and PAT of 7.41 CR, which is roughly 14% and 9.2% respectively. In comparison to financial year 22, growth in revenue is 45%. Uh, while growth in EBITDA is 26% and growth in PAT is 25%. As the CFO of our company, uh, we believe that despite the discussed challenges, the current results are good. However, we acknowledge that there is still room for improvement, particularly in terms of our top line and gross profit. And we are continuously working on strengthening these areas. When it comes to our expenses, we have been performing well, I'll say, by keeping them in check and optimizing them continuously, which has become a kind of habit for a company like us, which is a bootstrap company. If we examine our expenses, uh, we can see that they have not increased as stiffly is our revenue. So while our revenue has grown by 45%, some expenses have only increased by say 10%, 20% or 25% only. This indicates that uh, we have the potential to leverage our PAT uh, better in the future. As a company, we place constant focus on both present and future growth, which is reflected in our diverse workforces, consisting of individual who contributes to the present as well as the future. So if you check on our uh, HR expenses, I mean, uh, related to salaries and all, it's, I mean, in sync with what uh, the growth in business is 45%, so it's roughly 45 to 50%. I mean, it's higher with respect to financial year 22. Our interest expense for the last year amounted to rupees 84 lakh rupees, which is primarily due to some previous loans with higher interest rates. However, these loans will be fully, fully paid off within the next 12 months as per their normal tenure. Year over year, our financial ratios such as current ratio, debt to equity ratio, has some improvement. 
in fact we have managed to achieve last year's revenue without taking on any additional debt for operational activities so overall we are confident and ready to achieve our financial and plan forecasted growth so that's all from my end thank you uh, over to ssri ssri you can uh, move ahead with q and a thank you very much sir we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchdown telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Shikhar Mundra from Vivo Commercial. Please go ahead. Uh, hi sir, uh, I want to know the split between uh, the B two C business and the B two B business in terms of revenue and the uh, individual margins in each segment. So, uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, division, you can say B two B is roughly fifty five percent of total revenue, and B two C is roughly forty five percent. and uh, in terms of margin uh, what's the respective ebitda margin for each uh, segment uh for corporate orders it's roughly 23% and uh, for uh, b2c it's, it would be roughly 30 30% you can say okay and uh, and uh, so what what are our targets for the next 2 uh, to 3 years like what kind of growth are we seeing uh i mean on demand side there is a uh, good potential we see so i mean what we have planned uh, i mean uh, we should be able to uh, achieve that and and how much are we targeting uh, revenue i mean uh, in terms of uh, growth in revenues i mean it will be in same line uh, of <laughs> i mean what we are uh, continue to do so it will be in the same line it okay. uh, won't be right to disclose the number but uh, yes all right and I, i want to understand about the competitive intensity like who are our major competitors in this space and, uh, and what is, and what would you say it is our share and like how big is the industry something on that uh i mean there is no competitor in the listed space at least but yes okay. of course there are uh, uh, some competitors uh, but i mean they are uh, they are not uh, internet first companies i mean they are uh, conventional kind of company who runs uh, with their conventional like sales person and also their you know uh, reach is kind of limited so yes uh, you can say there are uh, companies with similar nature of activities but uh, their way of oper- operation is very different than what we do okay and and i want to understand like what are our total ad spends uh, or marketing spends yeah atul here uh, so uh, uh, could you please repeat the question ad spend or marketing spends for the website so, uh, yeah okay so w- what do you want to know about the marketing spend uh, the amount we are spending on market okay so the yeah. marketing uh, ad spend directly amounts i i don't think it's the right uh, venue to tell the numbers but yes generally as a rule of thumb we try to keep our marketing expense below 2.5% of our overall revenue so the way uh, it goes us is this that we want to maintain let's say a which is our gross margin Okay. Out of that, we have uh, put limit to all our expenses, so salary expenses, and marketing expenses, and this expense and that expense. And the bottom line, we know that we want to maintain around nine to ten percent, right? Okay. So we control all our expenses within those percentage figures of our revenue, mm-hmm. so that to reach to the bottom line that we want to achieve. Okay. So for marketing, okay. it is around two point five percent. Below that, uh, we are supposed to. Like we are uh, always try to control below two point five percent. 
All right. And so we we expect these uh, marketing spends to uh, grow in line with the revenues only, and uh, or or do we uh, everything? Uh, everything. So okay. this, this is the fundamental of our uh, business philosophy mm -hmm. that all our expenses must, and I and and emphasizing on must, all our okay. expenses must always be proportional to our top line. Only okay. then we will be able to reach a bottom line, which is respectable, mm. like which what which uh, which we want to reach. So, if we want to grow, let's say our marketing expense, we have to mm. increase our uh, business accordingly. So, uh, it's like maintaining a proportion. And one day, uh, fundamental question I have with the business, like being a primarily trading business, how how do we generate such uh, good uh, gross margins, like in the line of around thirty percent? uh i don't i think we'll have to ask that to our customers <laughs> okay but i think it's 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 uh it's not just a trading business it's mm -hmm. uh, more than that i think we are into a technology business okay and we are selling a complete techno technical solution to our customers so our customers really value we keeping all the products that we know that they'll require for a solution so for example if you want to make a drone, you don't just require motors, right? You require okay. 20 odd products which are competitive yes. with each other, and then you have to keep those products in optimized stock to serve the customer at the right mm -hmm. point in time. So okay. that is a way beyond trading. That is not just buying a motor and selling a motor. Okay. And we believe that we are a technical uh, solution provider kind of uh, in our business sense. And I think that helps because we are technical people and we know our customers' requirements, and mm -hmm. we act on a we act on that basis. All right, all right, all right. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. If I have more questions, I'll join with you. Okay. Thank you. A reminder to participants to press star and one to ask a question. We have a next question from the line of Anuj T from Nomura. Please go ahead. Mr. Anuj, please ask your question. We have unmuted your line. Since there is no response, we will move on to the next question from the line of Lavnish Mohan from Zar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you to the MacSoft team for um, organizing this call. Uh, you know, I'm I'm more interested to know uh, something uh, on the history of the company. In a sense, um, what was the genesis of this of this business venture? What was the idea? Uh, and um, uh, which are the uh, which are the um, you know similar aspirational companies uh, in the in the Western world um, uh, uh, that we could that we could understand to understand Maxos better? Uh, and finally. Um, uh, when you came to the public markets, uh, the company did not raise money. Uh, I just want to know the thought process around this this strategic capital allocation decision that the promoters took, because um, uh, you know the effort that was that went into uh, doing the the SMA listing. Within that effort, uh, the company could have raised capital and accelerated growth. So uh, those are my questions. More sort of philosophical questions around why and how this idea came into rotation, and um, you know why um, uh, the, the promoters decided to just do an OFS and the company did not raise any money in the IPO. Okay. Uh, so uh, Atul here again, and uh, uh, the backstory of Robu is that you know we are four friends first. We are all uh, friends from my engineering college, I can say. And before mm -hmm. uh, Robu, we have a failed business of uh, doing chapati machines, 2011 to 2013. And uh, that is where, like, we we did one year like, one year in the industry, 2010 to 11. Then we have this background of failed business. I'm just rushing through because I I feel that, uh, it's not the right venue, okay? And uh, because of that failed business in background, we value every rupee that we. Spend, and that is how we started uh, from scratch in 2014. And basically, our business became our first 
investor so we started selling some products which were high margin back then and i think uh, partially uh, we had to do credit to the situation because that time amazon uh, even flipkart like ecom was in existence in india so we got i'll say a time leverage at the time and also these activities related to electronics industry were also taking uh, you know a steep uh, upward curve started taking a steep upward curve from that point on so uh, so basically being fine and uh, bring from the technical background help us we knew even today we believe that we knew know how this uh, segment works and what are the requirements of the customers that certainly helps if you go to the western side your one of the part of your question was you know what are the western companies that you can look up to so if you go to western uh, side there are companies like uh, maybe element 14 uh, or parnell group aru uh, there is spark fund ada fruit so i'll i'll not say it's apple to apple comparison but these are generally uh, type of companies that uh, we are uh, although we are trading in multiple segments and our core is always the new product coming into market but yes these are investment companies and one of your uh, like i think third part of your question was why did we didn't uh, raise any money or you know uh, thought of growing uh, exponentially by you know raising the money so from day one we are boot strap and initially you you don't know like you know first three four years were just like uh, I, i'll say we were trying to make sure that our business sticks and uh, it does not fail because initially in, in, initially it was really uh, not that big of a picture in front of us and later on we were getting sufficient funds from the bank for our business growth so there was a time when you know we were growing sufficiently with the bank funds and never uh, thought of you know raising the money and so so on right so i think i have uh, i've been able to answer your question yeah Thank you very much. One follow-up: uh, when I when we made the opening remark, uh, you mentioned that apart from the drone, which is your large category, there are certain other new product categories that that you are going to focus on in the near future. If it's okay, could you tell us which are these new product categories? Uh, I would not prefer. It was intentional to keep the names under wraps. Uh, I would not uh, prefer to tell the names right now. it's already okay. underway our plans are already in the way but we want to leverage the situation till some time uh, till we build the base in those categories at least okay okay thank you okay thank you thank you mm-hmm. we have a next question from the line of rajesh singla from vtg capital please go ahead Uh, yeah hi uh, good evening everyone thank you for uh, taking my question and thank you for arranging uh, the call uh, maybe uh, with respect to uh, uh, your your sectors which you are helping in uh, supplying these components can you name a few sectors which are uh, very important for your growth uh, like are you supplying anything to the defense sector or or, or any other sector which you would like to name so that is the first question uh, second question would be what is the revenue share of proprietary manufactured or assembled component which you basically um, assemble yourself and then sell it like uh, maybe the board or other things and the third question would be on revenue growth and margin uh, improvement in fy24 as i believe that now we are seeing substantial improvement in supply chain can we expect your abida margin to come back to fy22 levels and uh, on the revenue growth part you said that you will be able to maintain uh, the historical level of growth uh, so which was 70% so are you comfortable in achieving 70% of revenue growth in fy24 thank you yeah hello At- atul here again so uh, yeah. i think it is a club of two three questions so first you ask about the sectors that we are bullish in so i think yeah. when uh, as, as a company when we talk about sectors we do not talk about talk about the consumer sectors like you know automobile and uh, uh, let's say defense and maybe some electronics company something like that we focus on our product segment that is uh, by the strategy of company we focus on 
product segment. So we have already mentioned that we are more bullish on development boards and drone parts. And also we see the uh, business of IoT machine learning, like the wireless stuff, that is uh, going to be a good growing se uh, sector for us in coming few years. So we're talking about sectors, uh, more of product based and development board drones, uh, I'll say IoT are the three segments that we are currently bullish on. Uh, mm -hmm. Secondly, you mentioned about the OEM category or own products uh, revenue. So it, the revenue is generally 2% of our total revenue right now. That is the mix. Okay. And third, you mentioned about being the supply chain issue getting back to normalcy. Uh, what numbers we will be able to achieve. Uh, however, I uh, I don't think I'll be able to talk in terms of numbers uh, on this call. What I can say is that uh, with supply chain uh, easing out or ease out to almost normalcy, we believe that it will uh, fuel our overall growth and we, we are hopeful to see uh, good numbers in 2024. So maybe just on the supply chain. So is it possible to share like what kind of like how much sales you lost because of supply chain issues uh, during uh, last year? Because I believe uh, the margin uh, number definitely are there. So there is a dip in the beta margin because of supply chain issues. Uh, and so can you comment on like how much sales you lost or you could not serve in FY23 because of supply chain issues? Yeah, actually this was a quite hot topic uh, inside the company when we tried to calculate you know, the lost sales due to, you know, let's say, out of stock, we call it that. So because the products are not in stock, how much sales we have lost. However, uh, it is really difficult to calculate those numbers with some, you know, uh, with some logical conclusion. Because what happens is when, when the products are out of stock in the market, uh, it's really like we don't have the products, but some customers may arrange them internationally or maybe some customers are going for a different product, alternative product at that time. So I think it's really, uh, it's really difficult to reach to the numbers. We try to reach to those numbers, but it was really not making any sense. And many of the things like some of the niche products that we have, so many of the times the sales converts to a delayed sales. So mm -hmm. it's really hard to make a rational number and put a finger to it and say like, oh, this is the uh, sales that we have lost. It's kind of very complicated situation. Okay, so, so maybe just, just on the sales growth part, I think it, it looks like uh, it uh, seems quite fascinating when we look at like 70% CAGR and management is saying that we will be able to maintain the historical growth rate. So it, it so is it will it be wrong to assume 70 percent growth next year should we say like 40 percent kind of level looks more reasonable i know you cannot share the numbers but maybe just if you can share some uh, like rough ideas where where we can where the investor uh, can think about it i i really cannot comment on this because it's just like uh Norova, Kunjarova situation for me so <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I, i've been sandwiched between one side I'm not allowed to share and other side I, I really you know the investors want to do. I, I also want to tell that, that is the situation but yes uh, let's move ahead with what it is. So we are, we are hopeful for good growth and I think we have thrown our metal with uh, COVID situation coming in, supply chain shortages were even more steep three years ago. So we have thrown our metal with our numbers without having an external support from any uh, like free flowing money through the investors, uh, VCs or something like that. I think uh, that gives us in the, that gives investors some confidence uh, in us. And that's it. Okay. Okay. Maybe last question from my side, if if it is possible. So I just want to know, like, what kind of product portfolio expansion you can bring in uh, apart from the product portfolio you have. So how many products you can add? I know it's it's an internet business. You can add as many products as you want, uh, driven by the demand uh, of the sector. So any any insight on that? Like uh, what kind of product uh, segment you can add in, in your business? I think I already named a company in Western side, which is Farnell, and they are having around 300,000, 3 lakh products in their portfolio already. So I think uh, we, we have enough headroom, uh, like if we see in the future, we have enough headroom for at least, you know, uh, 
short term future and short term is like roughly 5 years for me so we have good headroom to even add the new products uh, i think we are we are sorted with that so there are there are like uh, hundreds and thousands of products in this categories uh, electronics and they are going to grow uh, so, so sorry what is the name of the company if you can just spell it panel f a r n e l l okay panel it's a uk based group yeah so just one more question sorry i just uh, yeah. came across one more question basically in terms of the supply chain so how much of your sourcing is based out of china and how much is based out of india so uh, i think 90% of our uh, sourcing is based outside india that number i have roughly in my mind okay uh, now percentage is china i'm not sure but yes i'll say one thing that it is uh, a lot and many a times because china has become manufacturing capital of the world so many a times it is like a company situated let's say in uh, uk however we are we are uh, they are manufacturing in china and we are importing products from china so many of our companies have that situation in place where the principal is situated in some other country but since it's economical to manufacture and distribute over the world so uh, manufacturing is happening in china Okay, so so your your vendor, your suppliers are based out of say UK or or Europe, but they supply yeah, their material yeah, from from yeah, China. Yeah, yeah, because it's economical to produce in China, and why to do it two times to get them to UK and then again to other countries. Right. So I, I'll not say all of the suppliers, but yet that 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 is the complicated situation that we have. So, principal design product in some other country, and it is getting shipped out of China. Okay. So, so your direct sourcing is not from China. So you place order with the Maybe customers no. sitting in. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying our direct sourcing is not from China. For some company, it is. The companies are situated in China. For some companies, it's a mix where company is not situated in China, but we are still getting material out of China. Okay. And 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 I'll be very frank with you. Like if this question ultimately is directed towards dependency on China, so I'll be very frank with yeah. you. Uh, the whole world is yeah yeah no definitely i think everyone is dependent on china <laughs> so you can't uh, single out one company that uh, it is yeah. dependent it's yeah. more dependent on china yeah no it's okay i think electronics are, the global electronics is all dependent on china so even iphone because and all these things also surprising that's China. that's a whole thing surprising and the manufacturing boom we saw in china so yeah. it's it's okay yeah. it's, uh, i think it's fine yeah. okay okay thank you thank you very much yeah thank you Are you ready to participate? To press star and one to ask a question. We have a next question from the line of Kiran B. Chedda from Chedda Investment Consultancy. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, so you just mentioned that uh, you have started supplying to the government. Now, what do you mean by government? Is it the government uh, projects, government departments, government companies, or what? Hello. hello yeah yeah so, uh, mainly we are targeting government r&d labs right now okay, okay. and we are directly uh, we are targeting supply directly to the government uh, agencies okay so uh, how to put it uh, so the so the uh, there are r&d labs uh, government labs like bell drdo and all all uh, other institutes so we there are educational institutes like iits uh, where a lot of research is happening right so a government is a big umbrella and we are trying to get our products across by forming a separate team and re- reaching to the government agencies trying to like it's it's the usual cycle for us where we always want our products to enter into some research or prototyping cycle and we are pretty sure that you know uh, down the line when the when the research of proto converts to a product then uh, our product will move along the, along the line okay what percentage of your revenue would be government in the last year uh just give me a second huh?
Hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are not very sure on this number right now, but uh, it is somewhere around seven to eight percent. Seven to eight percent. All right. Yes. And so, how does this thing? I mean, do these entities uh, log on to your uh, website and order, or do you approach them uh, with some products which they might be needing, or how does it work? Yeah, so, our, so the government purchasing works through two things. Like for smaller things, the most of the government agencies are going through Gem Portal right now, and yes. for uh, higher value purchases, it's always that they float the tenders. So. Currently, our strategy is getting in touch with them, and uh, because of smaller orders, already we, we have already interacted with them for smaller orders. So we are now getting in touch with them uh, and trying to get get these tenders for higher value orders. So we are currently trying to convert the uh, smaller orders that we receive into the high value orders. Also, there are different uh, portals, uh, like different government agencies have have. Different portals. We are trying to get registered on those portals, and hence increase our presence uh, in the government-related ordering. Okay. okay. And so, <coughs> what are the done the basics? Uh, registering on portals, getting in touch, small, handling smaller orders. Now mm -hmm. we are getting, getting like we are trying to get into the uh, bigger orders stage. Okay. And generally, what are the payment terms? Sir? Because when the government agencies, uh, the payment is most of the time an issue with the companies, government agencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, generally they have some credit terms, uh, mostly in terms of 30 days or more. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, with, if you go with the portals, I think uh, are uh, like it's not the old days where the government payments will be delayed by you know like. Who knows how many days? So uh, even if they if we deal with them with credit terms, with the portal coming in and purchasing happening online, uh, we see payments happening more or less on time. Uh, we all take a week delay here and there, but yes, it's not the old days where you know you see the government payments which will uh, happen you know God knows when. So yeah, that we have seen even with the orders. Okay. Because central and government is uh, also pushing for the new policy and transparency in the payment. So mm -hmm. it's almost like that uh, the government agency to purchase the material is only responsible for purchasing. And once they approve that they have received the material, uh, payments are handled by another agency uh, within the noted credit, uh, like once the noted credit period is over. So uh, it's it's pretty straightforward at this point in time. Yeah, uh, my only fear is that because we are seeing an n number of companies uh, that you know this becomes an issue, and uh, we being a very small company, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we need to be extra cautious on this. Uh, yeah. So uh, since we are doing seven to eight percent of the sales, I'll I'll tell you uh, this: we uh, as on today we do not have any government defaulter uh, who has debunked the payment for us. So okay. uh, I think we have a, I, I'll say very small experience, but yes, so far so good experience. Yeah, that's good to hear. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order that management is able to answer queries from all participants, please restrict your questions to two at a time. You may join back the queue for follow-up questions. We have a next question from the line of Pranay Gandhi from Green Portfolio. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, sir. Uh, sir, I just wanted to touch back on the government order part. Uh, sorry, my call got dropped. I just wanted to know from you what is the outlook. And I happen to hear that the current proportion was 7 to 8 portion. Are we anticipating any growth or uh, are we targeting any sort of growth in this uh, department? Uh, hey, Pranay, Atulier, I just uh, couldn't, could you repeat your question, please? Yeah, I was just uh, trying to get more information on the government order. Um, at, at, uh, during the last year, it was 10 to 8 percent, right? Are we uh, targeting any growth in that number, or we would want to remain around uh, that number itself? So the government orders you are saying, right? Yeah, uh, in terms of promotion to our total revenue. 
uh, okay, I'm, I'm still not getting your question. So your question so, is for uh, government orders or corporate customers? Uh, government orders. Government orders, okay. And last year we have done 7 to 8%. That's what we have uh, said. Okay, so you're asking that whether we want, yes, we are bullish on government orders because uh, currently our government order situation is uh, we have a lo large number of orders with small order value that we believe uh, there is a lot of potential in that segment and we would like to further check the possibility of you know exploring that segment and uh, from our sides see how it goes uh, any uh, expectation or number that you can share for fy24 that you are targeting uh, we have some internal numbers, but I don't think it will be right to share the future forecast numbers. For That's not a problem. And I just wanted to touch back on the EBITDA part. Uh, it was said that it, it is 23% uh, for B2B segment and 30% for B2C. So it should be somewhere in the range of 24, 25. But if these I happen to margins. These are gross margins. Okay, these are gross margins. Okay. Yeah. Uh, could you throw uh, some light on I, I believe your growth margins are in the range of 30, right? Uh, like for for online orders, orders. For, for the online orders, our growth margins are in the range of 30, 31 to 33 percent, I guess. Okay. And uh, could you give a number on bottom line that you want to sustain? Previously, it was mentioned nine to ten. Uh, yeah. Did I hear that correctly? Okay. That you want to sustain. Okay, and my last question would be on your competition. It was mentioned that uh, the advantage that we have over our competitors is uh, that their reach is limited. Could you please elaborate on that? Uh, yeah, so uh, I think there are two, three things that uh, are USP to us as a company. One is that we are a enforced company, right? So let's say there is a company who is located in Mumbai, right? They have office in Mumbai, uh, but they are focused on selling these products by, let's say, sales team who is visiting the customers on foot and then pitching their products and selling. So okay. they can maximum sell to the Mumbai region customers or if they have some big order customer, maybe their salesperson can visit Bangalore or Delhi or Pune, right? Whereas mm -hmm. we as an online first company have advantage of having a website which can reach to, you know, every everyone across India without having to implement these sales teams like that. So, but uh, in, in today's era, uh, it, a, a company can develop their website as well, right? Uh, is there a mode that we have any advantage? But can, even they, if the, but can they get the website uh, as popular as Robu, uh, even if they develop the website? We have developed our website since around eight years and uh, it took that much time to develop all the content of our website, get the SEO right, and to reach to the level where there are, you know, 5 lakh people visiting our website every month. Our website plus as app combined. So okay. it's just like building a brand. So tomorrow anybody can maybe, you know, make TVs, but we cannot assume that the TV manufacturer will start competing with maybe LG or Samsung right day after, even though you know, it's very, it looks very simple. Anybody can just make some TVs, something like that. Makes, makes sense. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Manan Patel from Ayurabad mm -hmm. Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for opportunity and uh, congratulations for great numbers. Uh, the first question is regarding the inventory. So uh, I understand we have inventory-led model so we buy all the goods and then we keep it on our books and then whenever it sells, it sells. So uh, to continue the growth, we would uh, need substantial investments in inventory uh, in, in the coming year. So how do you look at uh, the cash flows in terms of inventory investment? Okay. So uh, Manan, right now the inventory turnaround ratio that we have, we are maintaining is around 2.5 to 3 months, right? And uh, we believe that inventory is our strength because it's not just any inventory. Currently, we have, I think, around 16, 17 CR worth of inventory. So it's just not any inventory. It's a really curated inventory of, you know, what we put on 15,000 products. 
so what product and what quantity that is really important and that knowledge that we have built with our knowledge and experience of years right so our inventory is uh, our strength that is what we believe because it is right product in right quantity which gets rotated in two and half to three months it's not like you know uh, whichever product sell whenever so we want to continue having this inventory rotation because with our experience uh, we have grown from uh, i think last uh, before three years our revenue were uh, at least you know one third of current revenues I, and right we have grown at least three times but yes we are still maintaining those ratios because we have placed systems in place and uh, i think we will continue to do so so we will be having inventory proportional proportional to our sales which we will be rotating two and a half to three months that is the whole uh, strategy and once you have product in stock uh, it becomes easier to sell it becomes easier to market and it's part and parcel of our business understood uh, okay secondly uh, the second question on the cash flow so uh, uh this time we had substantial uh, increase in the trade payables which helped our cash flow uh, uh, well so can you can you throw some light on why trade payables increase so much or we uh, we got very good terms and we will going forward we will get such terms from our vendors uh, uh, going forward yeah so uh uh i think we know the my cfo is the right person to answer this question i just hand it to him uh yes uh, so can you please repeat your question uh, once right so my my question is regarding the trade payable uh, so the trade payables increased uh, substantially uh, during uh, in this year if we compare last year versus this year and that helped our uh, operating cash flow uh and partly finance the inventory also so okay. uh, this does this trade trade terms are sustainable going forward or how do we look at this? uh okay so i mean uh just hold on it's uh sorry yes you can say i mean uh these are uh bit on higher side but usually uh, uh, what we prepare, what we do is it's uh, uh, normally i mean as on today it, it is close to 3.5 or 4 cr so this is bit on higher side usually uh, our trade payable uh, ranges in between 4 cr okay so so the current trade payables are higher and it might go down to some extent going forward yes i mean uh, if uh, if you see our current scenario it's le- uh, way less than this it would be close to uh, 4 cr understood and, and sir in terms of you uh, very well explain the indes- uh, the inventory model so uh, if if we are on a high growth path do you do you think we would ha- need to raise substantial funding from banks or uh, maybe equity going forward a few years down the line uh yes i mean uh that situation depends on uh, how much growth you are uh, i mean uh, targeting so if you are targeting say 5x growth obviously you will be needing a lot of fund so our uh, you know future forecast and uh, growth are such that uh, we should be able to maintain the whole thing with our uh, own cash flows internal accrual and uh, with of course with uh, our uh, bank bank limit that we have understood sir uh, thanks a lot and wish you all the thank you thank you thank you Ladies, any questions uh, that was the last question for today sir i would now like to hand the conference over to ms adhyay from the security Thank you. On behalf of Hain Securities Limited, I thank Macfoss Limited team for listening patiently and responding all the queries in such a detailed way. I would also like to thank all the participants for joining this call. Now, I would like to hand it over to moderator. 
on behalf of Home Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.